Hello guys and welcome back to my channel interview with Bunny and today we will be discussing another important question for technical interview and that is the low level designing of the flight booking app. So generally while you are appearing for the interview in a product based organization over there if you are above 5 years of experience you will generally encounter a system design round where the interviewer will give you a problem statement to design a particular end to end system designing based on some requirement and the system designing is one of the most crucial round for the technical interview because if you cannot design the system with the mentioned requirement it is more likely that you cannot clear the interview so system designing is a very crucial round for any interview and today we will be covering one of the question from that system designing round and today's question is we have to design a flight booking system and this will be a low level designing so let's find out how we should tackle this type of designing question during our interview so whenever our interviewer ask you a system designing question it is very clear that this is an open ended question which means that there is no particular problem statement associated with that or there is no proper guideline to your question so basically it is your duty to constantly interact with your interviewer and to gather the requirement for a particular design so let's see if you face this interview question in your interview how you will tackle this question so the first thing that you have to ask your interviewer is what is the actual requirement for a flight booking system so at that point interviewer will obviously give you a hint about what are the basic requirement for the flight booking system for example a user should able to log into your application and select the flight based on some criteria and all these things so let's find out what can be the requirement for a flight booking system so whenever you are discussing a requirement for a particular system design you have to understand that there are two basic type of requirement one is the functional requirement and another is the non functional requirement and the functional requirement states that that what will be the functionality of the application and non functional requirement states that what are the additional functionality or features that you should keep in mind while designing the system for example the scalability maintainability and all this thing so let's first define the functional requirement of this flight booking system and here when we are discussing the flight booking system our architecture will be more or less similar like the way we have the make my trip yatra.com or the booking.com application we have and here we will be focusing mainly on the flight booking system so obviously the booking.com or the make my trip also provide support for booking flights and hotels and many more things but here we will be only focusing on the flight booking system so let's start with gathering the functional requirement for the flight booking system so whenever a flight booking system comes to your mind the first function requirement that is needed is the user should able to search the flight on your application based on the location or a particular day so this will be the first requirement so the next function requirement should be like the user should be able to log into your application so that he can provide his user details into your application like name gender date of birth and all this thing so the second requirement will be something like this so now since the user have logged into your application and also have searched the flight based on the arrival and the destination on a particular date he and she should be able to select a particular flight based on his preference so the third requirement will be select the flight based on the time or the preference so once he selects a particular flight the next flow that comes to your mind is he have to put his corresponding details for booking a flight now once he gives the personal detail the next thing is like he have to make the payment to confirm a particular booking so the next functional requirement is your application should be able to handle the payment gateway and once he makes the payment he should get a notification into his mailbox so your application should be smart enough to give confirmation mail to your user so here you can see these are some basic functional requirement what we need to consider while designing this system so and here if you look carefully this is nothing difficult because this is a logical flow of execution because if you are familiar with a flight booking system you will obviously know these are the fixed series of step that you need to perform to book a particular flight and obviously your flight booking system should also able to handle all the step to make it a fully functional 
So once you and your interviewer agrees upon all this point that this is the basic function requirement you need to define within your application, the next thing comes is what is the non-functional requirement for your application. So whenever you are gathering a non-functional requirement for your application, this non-functional requirement is more or less straightforward and simple. And mostly these sets of non-functional requirements remain constant across all the application because this non-functional requirement includes this following things. Number one, your application should be scalable, which means it should be able to handle a huge amount of traffic. Your application should be reliable. And obviously, number three, your application should be modular enough so that in case of there is any further requirement comes in the future, you can easily enhance your application. So this is basically what the functional and the non-functional requirement, what we can define for a basic flight booking system. Now, since we have got all the requirements for our application, Let's now see how we will proceed with our designing principles. So the first thing that you have to define is for your application, who are the actual actors for your application? So for example, if you just think of your application for a flight booking system, there are primarily three actors. One is the customer who will be booking the flights. Number two is the airlines authority who will be registering the flights. And number three is the admin who will be taking care for managing all the flight details in the application. So let's first define the list of actors that are involved within our application. So here you can see the first step of designing your system is the requirement gathering, both non-functional and functional. The second step is you have to identify the actors who are involved for using your application. The next thing is like you have to identify the primary entity that are involved within your application. Generally speaking, if you just take an overview of your flight booking system, you can easily understand the primary entity class will be first one is a user who will be booking the flights. Number two is the flights where all the details of the flight will be present. Number three is the booking entity, which will hold the metadata of all the bookings. Number four is the payment class by which the user will make the payment. And the last but not the least is the notification server, which will provide the notification to all the user once the booking is confirmed. So there can be obviously plenty more entities that are involved within our system. But broadly speaking, these are the five most important entity class that you have to define whenever you are designing the low level design for your application. So now since we have gathered our requirement, we have identified our actors and the entity class. Let's now start with the low level designing of our application. And thereafter, we will understand that what are the additional entity class that we have to define within our application and how different entity class will interact with each other to make a complete running application. So let's start with discussing the low level designing for our application. So the first entity class that we have to define while designing our system is the flight class because the flight is the primary entity of our application because without the flight class, obviously your flight booking system is meaningless. So let's first define the first entity class of your application and that is the flight class. Now let's see what are the attributes that need to be defined within this flight class so that we can create a complete flight booking system. So the first thing that we need to define within this flight class is the flight number. So obviously each and every flight should have a unique flight number associated with the corresponding flight. Also along with that, if you look carefully, each and every flight should be associated with an airline's authority, which means that for example, you can consider Indigo, GoAir and all these things. So we will be having one more entity and that is the airline authority. So this will be again another entity class within our application. So in this way, whenever you are designing the system in each and every step, you have to keep on asking yourself that how much level of detail you can put on a particular entity class and how modularly you can segregate each entity class in a meaningful way. So let's see how we can proceed further. So right now you can see we got two attributes within the flight class. One is the flight number and number two is the company or the authority with which the flight is involved. Now let's see what are the additional attribute a flight can have. So obviously a flight will have a particular number of seats which will differ from different flight types. For example, a small flight will have about 90 seats whereas a big flight might have 150 seats. So in this way, based on the flight types, we can have multiple number of seats available for a particular flight. So let's define an attribute called as seat capacity. Now, if you look carefully, obviously all the seats within the flight will not be of same category. 
For example, within a flight, we can have economy class, business class and all these things. So obviously all the seats within the flight do look similar but it have a specific property associated with it. And since the flight can obviously have a hundreds of seats, so here we will define a list of seats available within this flight where each seat is defined by a particular character. So now since we have identified few of the property of the flight class, let's now extend this character a bit more and let's granularly do the low level designing of it. So the first thing what we have to do, we have to define this airline class. So let's define the attribute provided within this entity class called as airline. So obviously whenever you are talking about a airline, so obviously that airline class will have a name that is for example Indigo, Air Asia, something like that. And obviously that airline should have the list of all the flights that are associated with that airline. So here also we will provide a list of all the flights that are associated with this corresponding airline. So here you can see how progressively we are defining entity for a particular class. So here you can see we have a flight class and within this flight class we have an association and that is the airline class which have the name of the airlines and all the flights listed within this airlines. Now the next entity class that we have to define is this seat class. So as I was telling you within a flight there can be different categories of seat. One is the business class, one is the economy class and all the seat should have a particular unique number. So here we will define another entity class within our system and that is the seat class. And within this seat class we will have two primary attributes. Number one is the seat number and number two the class of the seat which means whether it's a business class or the economy class. So here instead of a string it can be an enum class which can hold two value. Number one is the business and number two is the economy. But as of now I will keep it simple and I will keep it as string. So here you can see we have defined another attribute of our class and that is the seat class which has the dependency over here. So here you can see we have already identified three entity class within our application. Number one is the flight class, number two is the airlines and number three is the seat class. Let's now understand that how we can further extend our low level design. So now before proceeding further, let's now understand a simple fundamental thing. And that is, for example, there is a flight with a flight number 101, which flies from Lucknow to Bangalore on Tuesday. Similarly, the same flight can travel from Lucknow to Delhi on Wednesday. So you have to understand that a particular flight will not travel from a single arrival point to the single destination. Rather, on a particular day of a week, on a particular time, it can fly anywhere, wherever it is scheduled. So here you have to understand, whenever a user is booking a flight, he is actually not booking the flight. Rather, he is actually booking the schedule of a particular flight. So for example, the Indigo flight 101 is flying from Lucknow to Bangalore on Tuesday, which is one of the schedule of the flight. And as a user, I am trying to book that schedule of the flight. So what I mean to say is like, so for a particular flight, there can be a lot of schedule associated with it, which means that within this flight entity class, we have to define another important property that is schedule. And since a particular flight can have multiple schedule associated with it, so obviously it will be a list of schedule. So I hope that is clear to you that why I have defined another entity called a schedule. So now let's see how we will define this schedule class within our application. So let's define the class called a schedule. And for a particular schedule, obviously there should be a flight who will be following that schedule, right? So within this schedule class, there will be a flight who is actually following this schedule. And within this schedule, there should be a starting and the ending point of the flight. So for example, on a particular day, Wednesday at 6 o'clock, there is a flight that runs from Delhi to Chennai. So obviously for that particular schedule, we have to identify the start and the end point of the flight, which is nothing but an airport. So here what we'll do, we will define two attributes and that is the start endpoint and number two, the end endpoint. And since the start and the destination of a particular flight is nothing but an airport, so we will be defining a specific airport class for that. So here you can see we have identified one more entity class that is airport. But before going into the details of the airport class, let's now see what are the additional attributes that are involved within the schedule class. So another important entity within the schedule class is the timestamp. Means for traveling from the start to destination, what will be the timestamp at which it will start its journey. 
and what is the ending time of the journey. So here we will define an attribute called as time which will identify the journey time of a particular flight. Now the next thing that can happen to a particular schedule of a flight is a flight can be delayed or it can be on time or it can be cancelled. So obviously for a particular schedule of a flight we have to provide another attribute and that is the status of a particular flight which is basically nothing but an enum class which will hold few of the attribute like delay, on time or cancel. So these are the basic attribute what we need for this status class. Now comes the important thing. So whenever you are booking a particular flight, you will see that for a particular schedule of the flight, the price of the seats of the flight will vary from time to time, which means that based on the availability of the flight and based on many parameters, the fare of the flight varies from flight to flight. So obviously to maintain that price detail within our flight, we obviously have to define some attribute by which we can identify the price of a particular seat on a particular flight based on a particular schedule. So hopefully that is clear to you. So let's see how we will define. So we will define the list of flight seats which will inverse the, the fair details for a particular flight. So obviously to define this flight seats, we have to create another entity class called as flight seat. So let's first define another class called as flight seats, which will extend the flight class which we have defined earlier. Because each and every flight seat will obviously have a flight number and the class name. But with addition to this two attribute, it will also have two more additional attribute and that is the price and the status of the seat. Which means that for example, you want to book a particular seat 15F. So obviously that 15F is the attribute of this seat class. And since if we assume that the 15F belongs to the economy class, so those two attributes will be handled by this seat class. But this fly seats entity will capture some additional information and that is the price of the flight. For example, for traveling to Bangalore to Calcutta, the price of the 15F is 7000 rupees and since you are booking for the first time and this is empty so obviously the booking seat flag will be empty which means that it is free to book by anyone but once you book the flight the status of the seat will be booked so there can be two status for a particular seat and that is open or booked means open for booking and number two is the book so here you can see how by iterating over single single attribute you have to define the low level designing of a particular system. So here you can see we have defined another two entity of our application and that is the flight seat which actually extend the seat class over here. And here we have a dependency on the booking seat which is nothing but our enum class which have two value number one is the booked and number two is open. So I hope until this point this is clear to you that how we are trying to define the low level designing of our flight booking system. So let's now see what are the other thing that we have to define within this flight class. So here if you see one more additional entity class that we have to define here is the airport class that we have defined within our schedule entity and each airport will obviously have few attributes. Number one is the name of the airport, number two can be the location and plenty more. But obviously within a particular airport there should be one more important attribute and that is the list of flights that are already present within the airport. So these are basically the primary functionality that should be there within this airport class. So here if you look carefully you can see we have already identified all the attributes and the entities that are needed for defining all the flights within our flight booking system. Let's now see the second module or the phase of our flight booking system and that is how a user will be booking a particular flight. So the first thing that we have to keep in mind for booking a flight is we have to define an entity class called the user. So let's define the first entity class called as user and the user since he is creating an account within our application he should include few of the details like name, email id, date of birth, gender and so on. And so this becomes another entity of our flight booking system. So here you can see this part represent our flight booking system and this part defines the user interface which will be involved to book a flight. So let's see what are the additional things that we have to define over here. So whenever a user logs into our application, he should be able to search the flight based on the specific location and the date details. So there should be a dedicated airline booking functionality which will actually provide all the details to this user. And to define that functionality, what we will do, 
we will create the major class, the primary class, and that is the flight booking system class. And this flight booking system class is the core functionality of our entire application because with the help of this functionality, user will be able to search the flight, book the flight, and all the functionality that are needed within our application. So obviously, since this is the core of our application, so this flight booking system should have the list of all the user present within our application. And also it should have the list of all the flights that are associated within our flight booking system. And within this flight booking system, we should have few major functionality. The first functionality is get flight details, which will take three parameters. Number one is the start location. Number two is the destination. And number three, the date on which you want to search for the flight. So this is one of the core functionality that should be there within our application, that is get flight details. Now, obviously we will not go into the detail of how we will write the logic for this because that will go into the implementation phase. But obviously you can see that with the help of these three attributes, we can easily search this entity class from the schedule and flights and we can fetch all the flight details present on a particular schedule based on the location and the details we are providing over here. Now let's see what are the other functionality that should be there within the flight booking system. So the next functionality that should be there is the booking flight. So once the user get the detail of all the flights, obviously as a next step, he will go with booking the flight. So there should be another method called as booking flight, where to book a particular flight, we need two attributes. One is the flight details and number two, the user details who is booking the flight. So this is the functionality which will be responsible for a booking a particular flight. Now, once the booking has been done, there should be another important functionality that should be involved and that is confirm booking which will send a notification to the user based on the schedule which he have paid for. So here what we will do in the parameter we will be passing booking detail as an object. So here you can see these are primarily all the main functionality that is required within your application by which you can design the complete implementation of your flight booking system. Now here you can see within this confirm booking attribute I have passed another entity and that is the booking details. So obviously here we need to create another entity class called the booking details which will include all the booking details that we need to send as a notification to the user. For example, the flight details, the detail of the user, the start and the destination, the traveling date, PNR number and so on. So there can be a plenty more details that can be involved within this flight detail system. So this becomes which another entity be capturing over our... here which will go as a notification to the user. Flight booking system. So here if you look carefully, we have almost covered all the entities that we need to define within our system to create almost an end-to-end -end flight booking system application where a user can come to our application, search for a particular flight, book a particular flight and get a notification as per the functional requirement that we have defined at the very beginning. The only thing that is missing is the payment and the notification module. So over here we will be defining two modules. Number one is the payment module and number two is a notification server. But this two module is itself a huge thing to define because it requires a separate system designing principle to define this notification system and the payment system. But since within our design, since these two are not the core functionality that we need to define, so we will be skipping the two implementation over here. Rather, I will be creating a separate video on low level designing of the payment and the notification server where we will define in detail that how we should define all those system over there. But here you can see this low level designing is enough to create a flight booking system. So hopefully you guys have thoroughly understand each and every module that we have defined over here and how each and every module is connected with other and how they are interacting with other modules to make a complete application. So obviously there can be plenty more attributes that you can also add or plenty more functionality that you can also add into your low level designing to give it a further enhancement. But as of now, I will stick with the requirement that we have defined over here and we will close this session. So hopefully you guys have thoroughly liked this video and if you have liked this video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So see you guys in our next video where we will be again discussing another low level designing question on system designing. So see you on our next video. Thank you.